Upon Completion of the First Chapter of Justice, What's the Right Thing to Do? by Michael Sindel. I was introduced to the trolley case and the goat herd case in order to engage in moral reflection and achieve some degree of a reflective equilibrium. One is a hypothetical situation and the other was an actual event that took place. The first version of the trolley case included placing myself on a trolley with faulty brakes and five workers ahead. As opposed to continuing on the track and killing five individuals, I'm, giving only, I'm given only one other option, to turn onto another track with only one worker, killing him or her. If we were to take a poll on, on which of the two options a large multitude of individuals would choose when placed in that situation, the majority would definitely prefer the second option creating the principle of how it is essential to sacrifice a few if that means that a larger amount will be saved. The second version of the trolley case is a similar situation, except this time the other track with only one worker is non-existent. Instead, you are set on a bridge overlooking the trolley with faulty brakes. Next to you is a large man that would, if pushed, would surely stop the trolley before taking the lives of the five workers making you responsible for saving the lives of five individuals while simultaneously being responsible for, responsible for ending the life of one innocent man that had no intention of being involved in the situation in the first place. This version surprisingly feels much more immoral compared to the first version. The principle should remain the same, right? Sacrifice less in order to save many. But why is it that the two versions feel different? I feel that the first is an easier decision to make because you are placed in the direct line of the situation. Only you can make the decision. The second is a little different because having to choose whether to intervene or stay put is a bit more complex. You aren't the only one that could make the choice. The man could willingly jump and end his own life if he so pleased. You, as a bystander, feel to have less authority to end a stranger's life by physically throwing him to his death as opposed to turning a trolley onto another track. Sindel then continued on to describe a situation that actually took place, the goat herd case. Latrell and three others were sent on a military mission. Two Afghan goat herds and a boy appeared before them. They were unarmed, but they now had the power to put the American lives at risk. Latrell and the three others took a vote, and he had the defining vote. They let them go. Later, 19 Americans were killed because of his vote. He stated that as a Christian, he had a problem committing cold-blooded murder. When relating the goat herd case to the first trolley case, one could justify sacrificing the least in order to protect the majority. It just seems obvious. But with the second trolley case, I would say that it partially justifies the decision that he made that day. They were on a mission. In order to have a successful mission, it is assumed that anything that were to persecute that mission should be eliminated. Although likely, they were not they were not 100% sure that those individuals were innocent or not, or would perhaps even be tortured for this information until revealed. Luttrell's uncertainty over the future and the certainty of his Christianity led him to make the decision against committing cold-blooded murder. In the second version of the trolley case, although given a hypothetical situation, our human brains slightly deny the certainty. The certainty of having the capability to throw a man over and have him land in the perfect position to prevent the death of five is much more difficult to grasp than the first version of the trolley case where you simply have to turn on another track. The timing and strength of the first version are near to irrelevant when the second trolley case requires appropriate timing and strength to be crucial. In the goat herd case, there was uncertainty present. He had known, had he known for sure that the individuals would reveal the information and lead to 19 of his men being killed, he would have obviously chosen the alternative. It's easier that way. Knowing makes it easier. One must assume to know for a fact, if forced to choose, sacrificing few will lead to protection of many more lives. If Luttrell would have had this mindset and followed this principle, he would not have so much regret. Uncertainty is what often distorts minds when it's time to make decisions as difficult as these. Although it may see, feel completely immoral, I believe that it only feels this way when an individual allows their mind to be taken over by uncertainty.